Welcome to the Video Dictionary, where we explore the history of the words and language we use every day. My name is Benjamin Lewis. If you're interested in language and the history behind it, subscribe and click the little bell so you never miss a word. Will you guys quiet down? I'm trying to record a video here. Spam. Noun. Canned ham luncheon meat manufactured by Hormel. Also, unwanted, voluminous, and obnoxious email or other digital message that crowds out unwanted and useful content. Verb. To repeat something over and over to the point of nuisance. History and etymology. Would you guys cut that out? According to the Oxford Encyclopedia of Food and Drink in America, J. Hormel, son of George Hormel, founder of the Hormel Meat Company, needed a way to sell pork shoulder that wasn't selling very well. So Jay had a canned spice ham created. But what to call this creation? Jay wanted a word that could be trademarked. So a contest was held to decide the name of this new meat product with a $100 prize. And of course, who would win but the brother of the Hormel vice president, an actor by the name of Kenneth Degnew. The winning name was Spam. That's the story behind the name, but I feel it's a bit unsatisfying. But I wanted to know if it actually meant something initially. But the Hormel company is keeping their lips sealed on what the name means. They only say that a few retired members of the Hormel management actually know what the name means. Some speculations say it might be a portmanteau of spiced ham or a shortened version of shoulder of pork and ham. Somewhere, I've heard that it was an acronym. I think this is a military term for shit posing as meat. I think that last acronym was created during World War II, well after the creation of the meat. Due to Spam's shelf-stable and canned nature, the U.S. military chose it as a staple of its rations for troops stationed around the world. It spawned phrases like Uncle Spam, the Spam Fleet, and even when the USO was touring, they were on the Spam Circuit. Anywhere the U.S. military was stationed, Spam left an indelible mark on the people there, especially in places like Hawaii, where it's become a staple of the local cuisine. Even in England, after the troops returned home, they brought their taste for this magical canned ham home with them and shared it with their families. And in the 70s, it was still popular enough for the comedy group Monty Python to include Spam in a skit during their popular show, Monty Python's Flying Circus. Could I have egg, bacon, Spam and sausage without the Spam? Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, I don't like Spam! Spam, 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 Okay, okay, that's enough of that. Now, just repeating the same word over and over, drowning out all other conversation, while funny in this sketch, can get pretty annoying. This comedy sketch inspired the use of the word spam to describe a practice we now call spamming. In the early days of the internet, when bulletin board systems and multi-user dungeons were popular, spamming was used to scroll unwanted text off the screen or to annoy unwanted newcomers to a chat room until they would leave. For example, when Star Wars fans would invade a Star Trek chat room, the regular users of that room would repeat spam or some other word or phrase over and over, making it difficult for the invaders to get a word in edgewise, and hopefully they would just leave. Later, spam became a more generalized term for anything that was posted multiple times to the point that it would become bothersome. This is when it became associated with unwanted or unsolicited digital messages. And in 1998, the new Oxford English Dictionary updated their entry for the word spam, adding the new meeting to the already existing reference to the canned luncheon meat. This process isn't exactly what they'd call genericization, 
That's when a company loses their trademark due to its ubiquitous use to describe similar products. But it comes pretty close and caused Hormel to take extra care to protect their trademark. I don't think I've ever seen a cooking show where they actually use the word spam to describe this meat product. Instead, they use generic terms like spiced ham or magical canned ham. In fact, for a while, Hormel was trying to fight the word spam being used to describe unwanted junk mail. But now they've lightened up a bit. Though they have released some guidelines, they would like the internet to follow when referring to their product. Please do. Always put the trademark SPAM in all capital letters. Follow SPAM with luncheon meat or other descriptor. Remember, a trademark is a formal adjective and as such should always be followed by a noun. Actually, now that I think of it, it might not be such a bad thing for spam to be associated with junk mail like it is. Just talking about it and thinking about the word has made me want to go out and buy some and try it again. I think I'm in the mood for some musubi. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. If you feel like you've learned something, share it with a friend. If you'd like to learn more about my project, follow the, the link in the description to my website. And until next time, keep on learning. Oh no, not these guys again.